All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel here. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about something very important, and that is the use of the Desmos calculator on the new SAT. And so I'm gonna show you all these different tricks and things you can do that will make your life a lot easier when you actually go about taking this test. So let's dive right into it here. All right, first thing I do wanna show you is that when you have Desmos pulled up, you're gonna have this little keypad button down here. And if you go ahead and click on that, Okay, you're gonna have some basic uh, operations here, like if you need to square something, um, or if you need to raise it to a different power. But what if you need to take like cubed root or something else completely? Well, there's this button functions here that you can click on that gives you a whole bunch of functions that you're gonna have available to you on this test. And you'll wanna make sure that you take advantage of this. For example, you could take the mean, the median of different things, you could take the standard deviation, um, I think the most important thing from this though is probably going to be the nth root. Okay, so like for instance, if I click on that, I could take the cubed root of 27 and find out that that is 3. Okay, besides just going into the function, you can also just type things. Like if I wanted to take the mean of a set of numbers here, okay, we could say how to find the mean. You just type mean and then you type in whatever numbers they might be. So 2, 4, 7, 9, uh, 10. Okay, so it tells you the mean is 6.4. Do the same thing with median. You can actually just type median and list out your numbers there, and it will just tell you what the median value of that list is. Okay, same thing with standard deviation and so forth and so forth. Um, one that you might find yourself frequently using is the square root here. So instead of clicking on functions and you know trying to find the nth root and just leaving it as a square root, what you can do here is just type in S, Q, R, and then as soon as you hit T, it will change it to a square root symbol there. Okay, so you can easily do square root simply by just typing that in. Um, also, Desmos gives you the ability to plot points. So like for instance, if I wanted to plot the point two comma six, I can just type it in here and you'll see it appear on the screen. Okay, now that's gonna be useful for a problem that we'll see later on today, uh, so we're going to definitely come back to that point here. But let's see some of the other cool features that Desmos offers us for the SAT exam. Well, the first one is that you can create a table from an equation here. So for instance, if I were to type in the equation y equals 3x plus 2, okay, and keep that highlighted, what I'm going to do next here is click on this button that kind of looks like a setting symbol, but it actually is edit list. If I click on that, it gives me the option to create a table here. So I can simply click on that table and it will generate all the X and the Y values here. Now I can change my X values to be whatever numbers I want. So if I type in like negative 100, it will tell me that the Y value is negative 298 for this equation. Um, you'll see where tables come in a little bit more as well um, later on in this video as we go through a problem that will deal with that. Okay, another thing you should note is you have the option to toggle this um, line on and off on your screen by simply clicking on this little squiggly mark over here. So if I click on it, it will disappear. If I click back on it, it will reappear. Also notice that when it's highlighted, when this equation is highlighted, you'll see both the y-intercept and the x-intercept automatically listed on here. All right, um, you may be asked to find the intersection um, between two equations. So let's say we had y equals 3x plus 2 and y equals negative x plus 5. Now, with the equation highlighted, okay, the intersection point automatically shows up. So all you'll have to do is hover over that here. Um, again, since the green line is the one that's highlighted, I'll be able to see the y-intercept for the green line as well as the x-intercept for the green line. If I switch off of this and click on the black line here, same thing, I can see the intersection point, I can see the y-intercept, and then I can see the x-intercept here. All right, um, sometimes uh, this can be useful also when you have to solve an equation. So for instance, in my example here, I have this equation which is 3x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 22. A cool way that you can just use Desmos to help you solve something like this is to actually separate it into two separate equations. So I'm gonna let the left side be its own y equals, and I'm gonna type in y equals 
3x squared minus 4x minus 1. And on the right side is just 22. I'm just going to say y equals 22. And I'm going to go zoom out until I see both of those here. Okay, and then I just need to go ahead and click on my equation. And you could see the intersection points show up. So solve for x, well the x values are going to be the two x values where they intersect, which is negative 2.181 and also at 3.515. And those are going to be my solutions to this equation here. All right, uh, you also have the ability to create a slider on Desmos, and this is going to be a useful tool as well. So let's look at an example uh, of this. So we're going to go to the example right here. Oops, we should leave that highlighted. And um, kind of use that example to show us how we're going to do this here. So it says a circle in the xy plane has a diameter with endpoints of negative 1, 1, and 7, 1. An equation of this circle is uh, given by this equation where r is a positive constant. What is the value of r? Okay, well, let's go ahead and just type this equation right in here. So we know x minus 3 squared um, plus parentheses y minus 1 squared is equal to r squared here. Now you'll notice that this option to create a slider automatically appears here. So I could just click on that and it will generate a slider, which will allow me to just slide the value of r to whatever I need it to be here. Okay, now we want to figure out what the value of r is and it says it passes through the points negative 1, 1, and 7, 1. Well, this is where plotting the points could come in handy here. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot negative 1, 1, and I'm also going to plot the point 7, 1. Okay, so I know I want to go through both of those points here, which means I need to lower my radius here than I have. Now I'm going to keep doing it until it goes right through both of those points there, and that's when my r value is 4. So since we're looking for the positive value of r, we know that r has to be a positive 4 for this problem, and we'd be done. Okay, now there are times where you might need to adjust your slider to be a different range than negative 10 to positive 10. And there's a simple solution to that. You just click on one of those. So I'm gonna click on the 10 here and you can make the range be whatever you want. So I could say from negative 200 to a positive 300. And then if I just click off of that, okay, now I can go all the way from negative 200 all the way to positive 300 and do everything in between. Okay, you can also just manually type numbers too if you need to. So if you want to see what 26 look like, boom, you could just type in r is 26 and see what happens there. All right, so let's take a look at some of these examples and how we can use some of these in actual practice here. So we'll start with question number one. Now question number one, it says Marcus's store sells apples for 225 per pound and oranges for 150 per pound. Huck's store sells apples for 350 per pound and oranges for $1 per pound. A certain purchase of apples and oranges would cost $21 at Marcus's store and $22 at Huck's store. How many pounds of oranges were bought in this, perp in this purchase? Okay, well, why don't we do this? Let's use X and Y because Desmos is really good with X and Y here. So we'll say X, we're going to let that be the pounds of apples. So pounds of apples. And let's let our Y here um, be the pounds of oranges. Uh, pounds of oranges. Okay, so we're going to write up two equations for both the stores. So first we have Marcus's store where the apples were 225 per pound. So 225 per pound of apples. In addition to that, we had 150 per pound of oranges, which is Y. And Marcus's store, the total cost for this was $21. Now at Huck's store, we know at Huck's store, the apples sell for 350 per pound of apples and one per pound for oranges. So it's one Y. And at Huck's score, this same purchase would be $22. So we have two equations here. So if you can get those two equations written out there, all we have to do then is graph them and you don't have to rearrange them. So you don't have to put them in Y equals MX plus B or anything. 
you can just type them in exactly how you wrote it here. So we could say 2.25x plus 1.5y equals 21. There's our first equation. And our second equation was 3.5x plus 1y is equal to 22. Now, like I said before, as long as you leave one of the equations highlighted, you're going to see that intersection point up, uh, show up, which is 4 comma 8. Now, x is the pounds of apples. Y was the pounds of oranges. Here we want to know how many pounds of oranges were bought, which means we're looking for the Y value, which is simply 8 for this. Okay, number two, uh, it says if the given function H is graphed in the XY plane, where Y is equal to H of X, what is the Y intercept of this graph? Well, again, you can just simply go ahead and graph this here, and you can even use H of X if you want. We don't need to switch that to Y. We say h of x is 13 times 1 over 11, that whole thing raised to the x power, and then minus 1. And like I said before, as long as you leave the equation highlighted, the x and the y intercepts automatically appear. So the y intercept, I just need to hover over this point, and it will tell me it's at 0, 12, which is choice B. Okay, uh, next one here. It says, Elizabeth runs an interior decorating business. The table shows the exponential relations between time T and hours that she spends with a client and the total amount N in dollars that she charges a client. Uh, which of the following equations best represents the relationship between T and N? Okay, now this is interesting because they give us this in T and N. And I'm going to show you kind of what happens here uh, when we're not using X and Y. So... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph that first equation. I'm going to type in n equals 402 times 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the t. Now, if I zoom out here, it will show up on my graph. So I could technically check these points here. But if I wanted to see it as a table and I went to edit and tried to click table, you're going to see we get an error message here. And that's because all the table measures are done in x and y. So I'd have to switch this where I'd say, okay, this is like the Y value, and this is like the X value here. And now if I go ahead and create the table, now you could see it generates a table where at zero, it's 402, so that checks out. But at one, this says 422, but we need this to be at 522.6. So that's not quite there. So, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to go to the one that looks like this, but it's kind of close. So we're going to go to choice D here. And we're going to try out 402 times 1 plus 0.3. So let's go plus 0 0.3. And let's create this table here. Now you'll notice when you do that, if we check our table against this table, 0, 402 matches up. 1 matches up with 522.6. And 2 matches up with 679.38. So that's a perfect match here, which means my answer has to be D. Okay, uh, question four here says just how many points do these two intersect? Again, we can just go ahead and graph these. So this is a pretty easy question now once you have the Desmos tool available to you. So there's our first one and then our second one, the 2x plus 3. Now, if you're not sure, make sure you zoom in. Okay, and we can see they intersect once here at 1, 5, and then another time at 5, 13. So there are two intersection points. All right, let's try out a few more questions with this. Uh, so number five here says, a man is removing trees from his property and the number of trees is cut in half every single day. There are 13,000 trees on his property when he begins. Which of the following represents the number of trees in his property T days after he begins to remove them? Okay, so when he begins, he was beginning at like T is zero here. He's going to have 13,000 trees on his property. And then each day, it gets cut in half. So when it's been one day, that gets cut in half to 6,500, okay, and so forth and so forth. So we just kind of have to continue this pattern of cutting in half here. So what I can do is just test these out. Now, we know if we want to create a table, okay, we want to make sure that um, we're using X and Y. So we don't want to use Y and T here. So let's just change all our T's to X's. So if I check out that first equation, y equals one half 13,000 raised to the, now instead of t, I'm going to put x here. If I were to make a table for this, okay, 
We can see at zero, it doesn't even start at 13,000. So that one's going to be out. Okay, we can do this pretty easily for the next one here. Uh, the only difference is it starts with a two. So we're going to do a two here and create my table. But again, at zero, it starts at two. Okay, so I'm starting to notice whatever the first number is, is where it's starting. So C or D is going to have to be the answer here. Well, let's go to C here then. If we did one, uh, not one half, if we did 13,000, and then we did in parentheses here, one half raised to the X. Well, let's create this table. Okay, at zero, it's at 13,000. At one, it's at 6,500. And then again, I should have wrote this up here. When T is two, if we cut that in half again, that would be the 32. 50. Okay, so this matches up perfectly with that, which means that choice C is my answer. Okay, number six here, the solution to this system is XY. What's the value of Y? Again, this is very simple because we can just type them in. Again, exactly as you see it. Do not rearrange them. So we're going to type both of these in to Y is equal to 41. And as long as I leave one of them highlighted here, we're going to see that intersection point of 7, 11. So if we want the Y value, the Y value is just 11 there, okay? And again, I can just toggle on and off any of these equations if I do want to see them or I don't want to see them. Okay, question seven, it says the given equation uh, defines the function F. For what value of X does F of X reach its minimum? Okay, well, if we're looking for the minimum point, we just go ahead and graph this here. So let's graph this, f of x equals 4x squared plus 24x minus 38. Now if I zoom out, another cool thing is with parabolas, if you leave the equation highlighted, so if I click back on this, it will also show you the min and the max values. So here, if we're looking for what value of x does this reach its minimum, what value of x, we're looking for the x value here, which is negative three. And so that's how I know that's my answer. Okay, finally here, um, number eight, what we can do for this one, let me hide that keyboard. Okay, uh, it says the expression 32 over 4x plus eight is equivalent to eight over x plus b, where b is a constant and x is greater than zero. Um, what is the value of b? Well, again, I'm just gonna graph this here. So the first graph, We'll type in is y equals 32 over 4x plus 8. Okay, and you'll see this appear here. And next, I'm going to do the second one, y equals 8 over x plus b. Now, I know these are equivalent, so I'm just going to create the slider b here. Okay, and you can see I can move that slider around. But basically, we want them to be equivalent. We want them to be the same. So I'm going to move the slider b. It's not 10. So I go, okay, let's go check out 8 here. I could put this at 8. It's not eight. I can jump to four or I could just change it to a four. It's not four. I can change this to a two. Oh, and when you change it to a two, it's right there. So we went from B is four here and we just slid it over to two. And as soon as we had two, it was right on top of it. And just to check it, again, I can click on and off and see that everything lines up perfectly. So my value of B here must be two. So on this test, make sure you are using Desmos to its full potential here to help you out because it is a great tool that can help you with a tremendous amount of questions on this test. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot us an email at info at beyondthetest.com or drop a comment below. Good luck on this, guys.